is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my
Welcome to Christ the Rock Community Church's Christmas production. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day that you give us. I pray that you bless this service, Lord. You bless this season. Thank you for all you have done for us. Please make sure that the people who are lost are found in your word, Lord. Please make sure that we have a wonderful night. Amen. In Luke 19.10, the disciple Luke writes, For the Son of Man came to seek and save that was lost. Have you ever lost something and desperately wanted to find it? How did you search for it? Did it stay on your mind? What was the value of the thing you lost? Mankind was lost. Sin committed by our foreparents in the book of Genesis by Adam and Eve separated us from God. The one sweet communion, fellowship, intimacy, enjoyed with the Father had been marred by willing disobedience. But indeed, there was a plan to redeem you, redeem me, redeem all who as a result of sin had been tainted and were spiritually dead to be awakened and brought back into relationship with God. Madison, I remember being lost from mom one time at Target and I couldn't find her. I knew she'd be looking for me, but I didn't know how she would find me in a big place surrounded by so many other people. You know, that's what I believe, how people feel when lost from God. A big world with so many people and so many things that happen to us that make us feel lost and scared. Do we believe that God is looking for us, wants to find us, knows where we are? Do we believe that He can help us with all of our problems? Perhaps you're in our audience today with questions. 
or you too know how it feels to be lost. Matthew, I know you were happy when mom found you, right? Yes. Our play today tells the story of four young people caught off guard in an unpredicted snowstorm on their way home. They scramble to find a safe place, but all end up in a local church. Weather conditions are bad and they are lost and cannot go home. Yes, but not only are they lost physically, they are lost spiritually. And their time together in a place they have no desire to be in does not only turn out to be their place of refuge, but to be their place of transformation in their lives. May you be encouraged as we present to you Found. any of this. Did I leave my phone in the car? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh. All I have is clothes, clothes, and more clothes. But no phone. Well, I guess I'll find my phone in the morning. I'll just sleep here for now. This looks comfortable. <sighs> There's so much snow. I've never seen so much snow. We almost died. Yeah, keyword almost. <laughs> Well, yeah, but... Hey, does your phone work? Huh? Oh, let me check. There's no signal. What? So we're trapped in here until the storm ends? Well, I'm sorry I couldn't pre predict the weather and that the lines would be dead. Do you want me to go back out there in this kind of weather? Really? No, I don't think that'd be very smart. Exactly, and so I'm eternally grateful for this conveniently placed place? Building? Um, Ivy, where are we anyways? Were you even paying attention when we first walked in? Well, I was just trying to get out of the bad weather, so I wasn't really... I think it's a church. A church? Well, yeah, see? Here are the pews, and the cross, and the little stand where the preacher talks to the congregation. Huh. Seems a little unsafe, especially those windows. Looks like they could shatter any minute, you know? Though they are kind of pretty looking, but Ivy, you sound awfully informed. You've ever been in here before? Someone invited me to their church once. I think it was a different one, though. Really? And they didn't invite me? Wow. Not like I care. Never been much for a church person anyways. And besides, like I said, this one looks totally unsafe. They should, like, take better care of their wood or Take another look at their security, because someone could easily break in here. Someone? You mean like us, right? And also, they should really clean up the place better. This looks really unhygienic. Actually, I think the word you're looking for is just dirty. Oh, whatever. But the pews look like nice sleeping places. I'll be taking this one. Hey! Holly, look what you did! It's not my fault, I didn't see him there. Didn't see him there? You could have been courteous and investigated the place before you go and throw your stuff around all lackadaisical. Hey, okay, calm down. I didn't see you there. It won't happen again, I promise. You interrupted my REM cycle. Do you even know what that is? It stands for rapid eye movement. It what happens when your brain goes to sleep. Yeah, I know what that is. I'm not dumb. But, um, I just apologized. You don't have to be so rude, mister, sleeping randomly in some random church you're not supposed to be in anyways. And? I was just sleeping here peacefully. You're the one that barged in here and smothered me with your smelly coat. Smelly coat? Smelly coat? I'll have you know I'm a very good smelling individual, and I had just cleaned that coat recently. Really? I couldn't tell. What? Stop. Let's just go home, Holly. Ivy, he insulted me. He called me smelly. All I did was react in a reasonable manner when you barged in here and threw your stuff at me. Now, unless there are any more objections, I'd like to get back to sleep. I've got none. Let's go. Yes, yes, of course. I object to your rude behavior. And what behavior would that be? 
You know exactly what I'm talking about. Calling me smelly, insulting me, and sleeping here. As I recall, you were planning on doing the same. Hey, okay, if I got smothered by some stranger's coat by accident, I would have just said, Hey, dude, it's totally fine. Just be careful next time. It's no big deal. You went off and said I was smelly. And you're the one screeching right I'm now. I'm not screeching. I'm making a point. And your point is? Doesn't matter. A point. Yeah, thanks for your clarification. Why are you here anyway? You don't look like the church-going type. I'm not the church-going type, but somehow the newscasters managed to turn a blind eye to the storm going on outside, and this was the first place I could get into. What is up with your language? Excuse me, in the back, what did you say? Nothing, nothing at all. So all this stuff is yours then? Yeah, my car is parked right outside, but it would make no sense for me to just stay in there and kill my battery. It's more comfortable in here. So you just barged into this shady place like nobody's business? Hey, you're one to talk. Hey, you're the one saying mean stuff, not me. Again, you're one to talk. Okay, that's it. I can't take another minute listening to this guy sputtering nonsense. Holly, please. Who are you on, Ivy? Can't you see this guy's out of his mind? That's it, this guy isn't worth my time. And I've got no time for your silly antics, so I'll be going back to sleep. What was that? I knew it, this place isn't safe. We're all gonna die. I can still see you. And what are you saying? Of course we're not going to die. What a storm. Oh, take a look who's here. You know him, weird person? Don't call people weirdos. But she just burst through the doors out of nowhere. Huh, well, well, well. Find a guy colder than the water itself at the local church. How you doing, Clive? Why can't y'all just let me sleep for once? What are you doing here, Clive? I can't believe you're here. Robin. Aw, oh, you know you miss me. We haven't seen each other in ages. Three days is not ages, and we go to the same school. But I can't say I expect you to become a hobo, though. I'm not a hobo. Then why are you sitting in a church? Seriously? Can you not see the snowstorm outside? That doesn't have to be the only reason. What only reason would there be? Hey, God. I'm not you. I don't know. What do I know about your weird wanting to sleep in random churches impulses? They're not impulses. I think we're all here for the same reason, considering none of us had any other choice. Unless you're here for a different one. No, nah, I'm here to wait up the storm too. I was just heading home from the sports center just on the south and the snow just dumped itself here and I seek shelter, you know? Just inspect Mr. Barlett here to look so comfortable. Seriously? I'm just saying. The door, leave, please. Only for them to shut your mouth. But I can't say I expect to see a party in here either. We should have a sleepover or something. A sleepover? Why would we even have a sleepover in the first place? Besides, I don't even know you or you. I can't say that's entirely mutual. Can't say that's entirely mutual? What does that even mean? Hey, I knew you looked familiar. You we go to the same school, me. don't we? Yeah, we do. I've seen you both around campus, but I've never spoken to you face to face. You're the captain of the fencing team, right? A junior? Hollis, I presume? It's Holly to you. No one calls me Hollis. Yeah, sure, whatever you say, Hollis. Stop. Are you sure you two have never met before? I've never even heard of him before. And hey, drop that smart act of yours, Mr. Clive. Whatever. It's obviously fake. Excuse me? I'll have you know, I am Clive Bartlett, in the top 5% of the school, and the valedictorian. This is not an act. Thank you very much. That's nice. Does it look like I care? Frankly, I don't care what any of you have to think. Oh, and if that were true, then why do you have to speak so, so rudely? Would uh, it kill you to even answer my question? Probably. No, no, I think this is getting out of hand. Let's see. I will finish making these dinners, and perhaps I can call Tristan and Shiloh to go and deliver them to the families for me. Excuse me? Excuse me. Um, Who are you? Who are you and what are you doing here in this church? Are you congregants of this church? Do your parents attend this church? I'm talking to no, you. What no. are you doing here? Uh, what is your name? Uh, Clive. And your name? R Robin, ma'am. Holly. And your name? Ivy. And... How'd you get in here? 
The, Who let you in here? The door was unlocked, ma'am. Oh, so the door was unlocked and you just decided to come on in the church for what? We were just trying to seek shelter from the, the storm. From the storm? Oh, from the, you're trying, are you lost? Yeah. You're lost? Yeah. Oh my God, you're lost. Well, let me ask you, are, are you hungry? Yes. I don't want you to be out there. Do your parents know where you are? No. Oh my God. Are you hungry? Yes. Uh oh, I, I tell you what, I'm going to finish packing some meals and, and then I'll come back and bring you something to eat. Let me ask you another question since you're here in the church. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> you don't know Jesus? Oh my Lord, and you're lost. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to pack you some food and we're going to come back and we're going to sit down since you're lost and you got to wait out the storm. And, and I can tell you all about Jesus, why the Savior came and how he changed my life and what he can do in your life. I'll be back. Now, don't you get into anything. Don't you ramble around here. You stay right here. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I'll be back. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you all about Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. They think they lost. But would you find them, Jesus? Find them. Find them, Jesus. That was weird. You can say that again. Do you think there's any more people that we don't know about? And if there are, do you think they'll find us?
Tristan, you know I got that. Yeah, yeah, game. yeah. You hit the ball out and what? you know it. You out of your mind. I'm so oh. Can't say I expected to see anyone in here. Um you still got snow on your head. Who are you? What are you guys doing here? Can't you tell the people aren't supposed to be here right now? Shiloh, I doubt they're here for churchy things. But I can't have four kids just hanging out at church. Dad wouldn't approve of it. So this is a sleepover. It's not a sleepover. This was never a sleepover. Hmm. What? You were planning on sleeping here? Okay. Well, so what are you guys doing here? Can't you see the storm outside? What storm? What storm? The storm that just came about an hour ago. What is that noise? <gasps> That's not good. Oh my god. I didn't know that playing ping pong would get a sidetrack that bad. Sorry. Of course. The rec room is in the middle of the building. There would be no way for us to know that the weather would be so bad. <sighs> so you're in the same boat as the rest of us. This is a disaster. This is a complete disaster. How can we even survive like this? Hey, um, don't churches have like food or something? Yeah, that's not appropriate for us to just go and take. That's something Ivy would say. Can we not? Are you guys talking about communion? What? You can't eat that for dinner. Isn't that what Jesus did? Well, Clive over here might just have some food. You're not getting any from me. Also, you do have some food. Push it over. Hey, you're not getting anything from me. So then I'll steal it from you and give it to her. How old are you guys anyways? Does this church have a working landline or something? Anything for us to call our parents? I'm sure the phones are down. In this area, with any bad weather, we lose service right away. So I can't even call Dad to tell him until all this is over? That's probably a no. Yep, sorry. But hey, I'm pretty sure Uncle Finn knows we're here. I always check in with him, and I told him we'd be stopping by church for a while. Yeah, but we have no communication with the outside. And we're all stuck in here until who knows how long. So all six of us. How are we supposed to work that out? I get a top bunk. There aren't any bunk beds here. And this wasn't a sleepover to begin with. Aww, you two are finally agreeing now. Doesn't that feel better? No. no. Come on, guys, for real, why can't you just agree for once? Robin, I don't think we need this right now. Hmm. Were you trying to sleep in here then? To get out of the storm, I mean. No, I'm just here for choir practice, you think? But wait. <laughs> The door's supposed to be locked. Who left the door unlocked? It wasn't locked when I got in. Or when I got in. Did one of you two forget to lock it? Tristan? <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Really, Tristan? <laughs> well, look, at least I got some place to sleep. I'd rather have four kids stuck in a church than outside and freezing the cold. Well, that's true. I might not have any jurisdiction over any of this, but you guys are more than welcome to stay here. Tristan? What else am I supposed to say? Our only other option is to throw them outside, and like we said, that wouldn't be a very good idea. Yeah, but... So, you guys can hang out here as long as you like. I I'm sorry we don't have any real food, but maybe after a bit of looking around, you'll find something? Uh, I'm not really interested in digging around through this kind of place. Holly? Well, personally, I don't think this place is all half bad. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, like, I thought churches would be a lot more stuffy and have this scary air going on, but this place is really warm and cozy. Sort of like a Werner cabin, but a lot bigger and prettier. Plus, those windows are really nice. Mm -hmm. What are they called again? Stained glass. glass. Stained glass windows. Exactly. Aren't they nice, Clive? I guess. Well, personally, I'm going to have to disagree with you guys. Would you stop being so rude? Honestly, I've never been much of a church person to begin with. Yeah, but that doesn't mean any. I mean, but isn't it like a type? Isn't there like a church type person? Because, I mean, look at you two. You two look like church people. Church, church people. people? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm all for religious tolerance and all that stuff. And you guys can keep doing what you're doing. I just personally don't want to get involved. Are you serious? What? I'm just being honest. Honestly and sensitive. Hey. Well, we won't force you. Right, Shiloh? Wait, Tristan. Didn't you say we could start looking for stuff? Right. If no one else is volunteering, I'll volunteer. So, who wants to go look through the church for me to find some food? Anyone? I guess I'll go. I mean, I, I do know the place really, really well. Awesome. I can totally work with that. Now, does anyone else want to go? 
Well, then I guess I'll come along, too. Great. Now, is there any other volunteers, maybe? Come on. I'd honestly rather stay here and freeze or starve to death than have to dig through this strange place. I hate being lost. I just want to go home and away from him. Thank you. Don't you think this grudge of yours is getting a little bit too far? Well, if it bothers you so much, I'll be staying here. I've got my own supplies anyways. Oh, then I'll be going. And I'll be staying with Clive. Robin, you can search with Ivy since you two seem to be getting along well enough. Great. And Holly and Shiloh, you two can go together. Meanwhile, I'll stay here with Clive and keep him company. That's not necessary. Awesome. I could totally work with that. We could totally work with that. Right, Ivy? Yeah, I guess. But isn't that weird old lady still around here somewhere? Weird old lady? Yeah, that weird old lady. Isn't she still here? Oh, you mean Miss Hannah. But no, she just serves in our hospitality area. I think she's here today, cleaning. And prepping some meals for some families in need. She can be going home in this weather. Anyways, Holly, come with me. I think I know a place where we can find some food. Come with okay. me. Um, okay, I'm going to head anyway then. Come on. So, so, you okay with being cooped up in here? No. I figured. Then why? Aren't you supposed to be smart? Thought you would have figured it out by now. Look, I don't want to talk right now. Of course you don't. Then why did you ask? You look pretty upset about being here. Isn't it obvious that I don't want to be here? No. I mean, the others are here against their wills, too, and they're not acting irritable. I'm not acting irritable. Yeah, your mouth may say one thing, but your body language seems to disagree. Are you trying to provoke me? No. Maybe. You left Hollis alone. That's because Holly spoke up sincerely about not wanting to be here. It's not my place to call her out. But you, on the other hand, just frowned. Exactly. And looked like you're ready to strangle somebody. Was it Holly that you're looking at, or maybe Robin? Is there something you're not telling me? Look, you wouldn't understand. I, I don't want to talk about it. Are you angry? What? Are you angry at anything, at me, at Holly? No. That doesn't sound very convincing. I'm serious. I was just caught off guard by these Questions? Am I angry? What sort of question is that? It's a sincere question. I mean, I'm just curious since you definitely looked angry when Holly was going on about not being a church person. I did? Is that a confession? No, of course not. I was just wondering if. I'm sensing a lot of anger from you. I feel like you're trying hard to hide it and it's hurting you. What is this now? A counseling session? If I may say, I never asked for one. Clive. What? You're hurting. I want to help. Why do you even care? Clive. Is this all a part of your little holy act? Pretending you got something with God? Like you care about the rest of us while we hurt? Clive, you... No, no, no. You know what? I'm nothing to you. I'm just one of those kids that you spout these empty words at, pretending that your God will fix everything and that it'll cover up the fact that this world is bad. But you know what? I know better. You can't manipulate me. And you can't sway me. See, I know God is dead. Because my brother is too. You need a minute? I... It's all right. Yeah, like that's the first time I've heard that before. No, Clive, really, it's all right. What? That my brother's dead? No, that you're able to tell me all that. Yeah, it was more like you tore those words from my mouth. All right, I'll give into that a little, but in the end, it was you who decided to tell me. So now you know now? The reason why I'm not a Christian? Because after all that, after all I did, 
I prayed for one thing and one thing only, for God to heal Alex. He just kills him instead. Clive, God didn't kill your brother. And so what? Letting him die is any better? Things happen that we can't explain. Tristan, I prayed. Can you explain that? I prayed and I went to church and I did everything. If God can move mountains and bring people back from the dead, wouldn't saving one of his followers be just as easy? Wait, your brother was? Yeah, he was. He became a Christian as he was hospitalized. But instead of saving him, he just let him die. Clive, this isn't what happened. Wait a minute. Alexander Arnold Bartlett. Yeah, he was 19 years old, five years ago. What? I thought I recognized you, your name. I wasn't sure, but now. How did you? What? The pastor may not be my dad, but he is my uncle. I volunteered a lot. Well, we volunteered a lot, especially back then before aunt. Anyway, our church was really active in the local community, especially at the hospital. Uncle Finn would go, to, go over and, and witness and talk to people and stuff, and some of us kids would go with him. So. You saw him? Yeah. You know, Uncle liked your brother a lot. Did you know that? I mean, he didn't want to play favorites or anything. He wanted to keep everyone equal, but it was obvious Uncle Finn took a liking to him. He was a lot like him. He was charming, funny, had this charisma that we kids especially liked. Yeah, everything that I'm not. You can't just say that about yourself. Why not? It's true. Are you sure about that? What do you mean? You know, how come I never saw you at the hospital? I never knew Alex had a younger brother. I... I never visited. Well, why not? Well, sure, there were visits here and there, but... Once my parents found out he was... A Christian? Yeah, once they found out he was a Christian, the visit stopped. Yeah, I remember him being upset about that. He was? Of course. I mean, I was still pretty young, so I didn't know a whole lot, but I could tell your brother was hiding a lot of pain. He was? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get too personal or anything. Yeah, any more than you've already been. <laughs> okay. Did your parents ever play favorites? Yeah, they did. Really? Alex may have been the eldest, but he wasn't the most liked. My parents never thought he was good enough. Good enough? Yeah, my, my parents are perfectionists. They strive off of good grades, hard work, and success. My brother, his personality, his charisma, they didn't think it was necessary. They always liked me more because I've always been just like him. Was he ever jealous? No, he never was. He never got mad at me for the way that our parents treated him. He was still sad though. Perhaps. But that's how he's like you. I mean, Maybe he was good with us, but even as kids, I could still tell. You know, I blamed that on you guys at first, but I guess I never really put too much thought into it. I always thought he had become a Christian to just, I don't know, just save himself. Hmm. So I tried to do the same. I went to church, I prayed, I, I did everything. You sound awfully devoted. I, I was. And nothing. Alex was never healed. That's not true. What? He was, just not in a literal sense. Not in the sense you're probably thinking about. Then in what sense? He was healed, just not on this earth. 
stop. Stop what? Stop. Just, just stop. Stop saying these things like they're going to make anything better, like they're going to bring him back. All right, well, don't take it from me. Take it from your brother. What? Alex became a Christian because his soul needed to be saved, not because he wanted healing. I mean, maybe he hoped a little, but that wasn't the point. Christianity doesn't ensure a longer life. It ensures eternal life with God himself. I don't know. That's just, that's just a lot to handle right now. I need a minute.
think that we had all this food left over from the men's Bible study, thanks to Miss Hannah. And none of it was spoiled. I know. I'm so hungry. Ugh, me too. Can't wait to get home, though. This storm has to let up soon. Yeah, I know. My parents must be looking for me and my sister. I know. They're probably worried that we might be lost, stranded, or even helpless. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would think that they will be. Never would have imagined being stuck in a church. Mm. Gosh, I just want to go home. I can relate. But aren't you used to working here? Yeah, but I don't live here, you know? Right, right. It would probably be really depressing to live in a place like this, right? Well, you're not meant to be lived in anyway. Well, we're here, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> Ugh, the storm just had to ruin everything. You have plans? Well, not exactly. I mean, I was looking forward to watching one of my favorite episodes tonight. And besides, there's stuff to do at home, you know? That's true. I don't want to be just stuck in some old church with literally nothing to do except eat some old food. No offense. None taken, but, hmm? well, this storm could not have been completely out of the blue. Are you saying there was some method to this madness? I guess I am. I mean, no one saw it coming. And even if no one's heard it or anything, well, we're all here together, right? So, I was just thinking. S sorry, I don't mean to burst your bubble or anything, but, no. I'm sorry, I... I don't understand what. Well, I'm not religious, and you're a Christian, right? Yes, I am. So that's just, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff? Yeah, this whole religion thing, all these weird crosses, that weird obsession with this dead guy, it's, it's not my kind of thing. Didn't you hear what I said earlier? No, no, I know, but it's just not like that. I know, I know. It's a tradition thing, isn't it? Tradition? Yeah, like, people come here at a certain time for service, right? I mean, isn't it? No, no, it's not like that. Really? No, really, it's not. But that's just too much. Too much of what? As a Christian. You're a Christian, right? Yes. So as a Christian, you have things that you need to do, right? I guess I do. Exactly, that's what I mean. What do you mean? That's just too much. Okay, well, prayer, if you're talking about prayer, um, prayer is simple. You know, it's like talking to your best friend. He listens to me, he encourages me, and you know, we talk. Okay, so maybe prayer isn't the best example, but I meant what I said. I don't think I'm up for that kind of lifestyle. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't understand. Of course you don't. Hmm. You've probably been a Christian forever or something, right? Actually, no. Yeah, but your dad's the pastor, right? Yeah. So yeah, you've definitely been a Christian for forever. It's not something you'd understand. You're not, you're not like us. Holly. What? Just because my dad's the pastor, that doesn't mean anything. But doesn't it? No. I mean, you were probably raised to be some perfect pastor's kid or something. You were probably raised up Christian and everything, right? That doesn't mean that I'll be a certain way because of it. That I wouldn't understand. Holly, I am not perfect. Being the daughter of a pastor means absolutely nothing. Being born into a family with Christians doesn't guarantee you anything. It doesn't automatically make me a Christian. You see, I have to come to God on my own. That's when I made the decision to surrender my heart and life to Christ. But that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Well, I mean, technically no one is. No, I know, but so you know how, how people think that we are perfect? how you're probably thinking that I am perfect. Well, I was actually a problem child once. You? You were a problem child. I don't look like one, right? No, you don't. I'm actually having a hard time believing it. <laughs> Are you sure you even know your... Trust me, 
I know. If it's not too much to ask, how long ago was it? Oh, it was a few years ago. I was probably your age. Wow. Holly, can I share my life story with you? But I mean, we barely even know each other. True. Why would you even want to tell me this in the first place? Because I feel, I feel convicted to. Convicted? Yeah. I feel like God wants me to share this with you. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, I grew up in church. That doesn't mean that I was born a Christian. I mean, I knew that I had to accept God and follow in His ways and all that stuff. But that was just it. I didn't want to. At least, not after my mom got sick. You see, when my mom got sick, my entire perspective changed. I didn't see God as the warm and loving Father that He is. I felt that He was paying attention to everyone else around me except me. I couldn't understand how God could do something so awful to someone who worshipped Him and followed Him. I mean, I couldn't understand how His followers could just ignore those in suffering. They all acted like nothing was wrong, as if my mom was not on her deathbed. I figure, if this is what he did to his people, I don't want to follow him. I don't want to follow this guy who hurt the people that love him. And so I didn't. Instead, I just hung out with the wrong crowd. I went to parties, I drank, I smoked, I did anything and everything because I didn't care but I wasn't happy the things of this world didn't fulfill me they couldn't fulfill me and then and then my mom died you see, the death of my mother was the end for me. I couldn't do it anymore. I stopped doing everything and I pushed everyone away. I felt so alone. Everyone left me, except for my cousin Tristan. See, he stayed by my side no matter how much I tried to push him away. He knew that I was going through a tough time. And so one day he, he invited me to this event at church. And I remember that night, the preacher said, no matter who society says that you are, what your culture determines, what religion or denomination you belong to, whether you're the most religious person in this world or the most hated person in this world no matter where you are in life all of us but all of us at one point or another in our lives are dead spiritually and so we must be born again in spirit he said if you want to know God through his son Jesus we all have to start at the same place you see, it doesn't matter what you've done in life, whether you're a good person or a bad person. If you're lost spiritually, you need to be born again. You see, that day, God met me where I was, my lowest point in life. And it was then that I knew that I needed Him to be my Lord and Savior. It was through that experience that I knew I needed God and that He could be the only one that could heal my brokenness. The message that I heard that night changed me. You see, 
see what I mean? It's, it's not like I've always been like this. It's not like I was always perfect, and I'm still not perfect. I mean, no Christian is, and no Christian will ever be in this earth. Holly, I have, I have gone to, through certain things in life to get to where I am. I, I know this is a lot to take in. After I told you my life story, but Holly, no, I get it. You do? It's, it's just. How can you give yourself up so completely? How can you put all your trust into one thing, one person that you can't even physically see? What if that's not enough? But it's always enough. How can you be so sure? Look at my life story. I was in such a dark place, but when he found me, everything changed. The Gospel of Luke and chapter 19 verse 10 says it very clearly, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Holly, I was lost when he found me, when his love found me. I don't think that he'd want to seek after someone like me. But he is seeking after you. I mean, it's not by chance that we're talking here. He wants you to know that he loves you and that he has the best plans for your life. You see, Jesus was sent to this earth to show us what real love is by dying on that cross to take away our sins and give us hope for an eternal life. It's all about an intimate and personal relationship with Jesus. You see, we talk to him and he does the same to us. Holly, you can, you can trust your heart to Jesus. That's how a relationship with God begins. I've never heard this before. I... I think I want to know more about who he is. Really? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I'd, I'd love to actually. That's awesome. That's great. Come to my, my dad's, oh my God, my dad's office. Let's get you a Bible. Listen, my dad has this cool Bible. It's like a hundred years old. It's so old. His great, great grandfather from World War I used to bring it over wow. to him. And it was so cool because he would come Do you think they're sleeping in another part of this church? I think I saw Clive going to the bathroom a little while ago. Uh, I'm not really sure, though. Oh. I was looking at some of these pamphlets here. Pretty interesting, if you ask me. <laughs> this one's funny. It's just, marriage, the right way. <laughs> wow, and this one says, talks about having purpose. Don't you think that's nice? Having a sense of purpose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one says that God loves you individually. Even though there are so many people in this world, you're still special in his eyes. Does that mean he has a lot of eyes then? Then that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's pretty cool. And this one, hmm, talks about a guy named Daniel from the book of... <laughs> Daniel. Hey, imagine having a book named after you. Anyway, he, they said that he survived a fiery furnace and a lion's den because of God. What a story, huh? Mm-hmm. Hmm. This one talks about that God forgives anyone and everyone who asks for it. Don't you think that's great, Ive? Well, some people don't deserve forgiveness. And you're actually not wrong. See, no one deserves forgiveness. But we get it anyway. It says it's called 
grace. But that's not fair. There are people in this world who don't even deserve to live. What's with this attitude? What did a choir girl from before? You okay? Nothing. It's fine. It doesn't look fine. You just want to hear what I have to say so you can go and gossip about it to other people, right? You just want to hear some juicy story for you to go and laugh about with your friends, don't you? You just want to talk about me behind my back. No, Ivy. Don't even try and deny it. You just be lying. That's all people ever do. Lie. Ivy, I'm not lying. How can you just sit there and tell me you're not lying? I'm not dumb. I'm not blind. I've seen it. Seen it with my own two eyes. People always act all fake and nice, and then they just go and turn their back and lie. Like it's nothing, like lies can just be played with, and that the truth can just be torn apart. But that's just another lie. You want to know why? Because lies can kill. My lies can kill. Ivy, you're not making any sense. Didn't you hear what I just said? Yeah, but... Robin! I almost killed somebody. Ivy, you're not making any sense here. What are you talking about? I How? What's wrong? What did she do to you? What did I do? Your sister just confessed to being a murderer. Don't talk to my sister like that. Ivy, what's wrong? What is she saying? Remember, remember last year, my sophomore year when that girl who was bullied? When she suddenly left in the middle of the year? Yeah, what about it? I was the reason why she left. I was the reason why she was always so alone. The reason why she always looked so sad. The reason why nobody would ever talk to her. I was the reason. I was the reason she almost committed suicide. Um, Ivy, I couldn't help over here, but are you okay? I mean, you do know that all that happened and it's not entirely your fault, right? You can't blame yourself for her actions. I try to be a better person. I tried to make up for all the terrible things that I did, but it was already too late. Everyone turned on me. They did to me what I did to her. Not that it mattered anyway, I was just getting what I deserved, right? Ivy, that's not true. I tried to find a way out. I tried to talk to my old friends, but they hated me. Her old friends hated me even more, but I still tried anyway. Isn't that pathetic? Even people who I didn't even know. Even people who I never even talked to. They only heard rumors about it. They didn't even let me approach them. But how could I blame them? If I were them, I wouldn't even want to be friends with the person who'd go so low as to almost make somebody do that. And then I realized maybe I didn't deserve a way out. Maybe this is just the way your God was punishing me. After all, what does a bully deserve other than punishment? Forgiveness, Ivy. God can and will forgive you. I mean, we've all made mistakes. But the Bible says that God didn't send his son to the world to condemn it, but to save the world through him. So if he's not condemning you, why are you condemning yourself? He wants to forgive you and to rid you from that guilt and shame. It's because I don't deserve his forgiveness. But none of us do. But he still offers it. She's right. What do you know? You don't even believe in him! You're right. I didn't. But, look, I'll admit, it's hard. I still have so many questions. Like, why would God take my brother away from me? But, I don't know, something happened today. And I wouldn't mind at least giving it a try. I don't want to live the way that I was before. Maybe for once he's right. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say like that, but after hearing everything that Shiloh had to say about this perfect personal father of mine, 
I don't think I don't think I'd mind giving it a shot. After reading all these pamphlets, I'll be interested as well. Ivy, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, Ivy, you don't have to. No one's forcing you to. Just because we're doing it doesn't mean- I know! It's just... You're considering it? I don't know. Maybe. I just, I don't really know how. You're not the only one. We can do it together, all right? We can all do it together. Yeah, we can all pray together. Hey, Tristan, want to start us in prayer? Sure, let's pray. Come. Everyone's hearts ready? Yes. yes. see 